Hey there, YTPC. Michelle Brook coming at you from a warm, clear, blue-skied Wisconsin afternoon. Happy Friday to everybody. Um, I was kind of hoping to do my three-way comparison of uh, the regular Fusilier's ration and the Special Reserve Fusilier's ration with the Bengal slices today. I'm just not convinced that my son is going to nap long enough. Um, and I, I don't want to be rushed doing that one. So I'm going to do another idea that I had in mind. Uh, so as you all have seen for yourselves, my tobacco acquisition disorder, my TAD, uh, continues at full speed uh, with no signs of stopping. And I got another package um, yesterday, I think, at work. And one of the things in it, I got the... Burley number no. five uh, from Cornell and Deal, but I also got myself. I meant to order two tins because I'm cellaring, uh, but I got myself one tin apparently of the John Marr by Cornell and Deal. You can see this is from this year. This is from March of eighteen. Um, yes. Uh, so I thought that I would do something that I I haven't done yet uh, here on on the YTPC and do a, a tin opening, like a true first impressions, experience it for the first time with you guys, um, just purely. So, um, the, it literally was the description that sold this to me. I, uh, I hope that it lives up to the description. I haven't seen, I think I've seen one person even mention this in the YTPC, and that would be Rene. Um, and I don't remember what he said about it, but in seeing that they had uh, a special on smokingpipes.com on some Cornell and Deal blends, and I think this was eight, eight fifteen for the two ounce tin. Um, let me read the description to you. It's a poetic mixture of bright and red Virginias with a good portion of Turkish leaf. Um, so I'm expecting a little sweet and sour there. Elevated by a genial portion of Perique and Black Cavendish, and then topped with the flavors of bourbon and vanilla. Um, John Marr is an unparalleled voyage, unparalleled voyage of sweet complexity. So, um, yes, this is part of their nautically themed uh, tobaccos. Um, so, you know, it seemed like it would be very different from anything I normally smoke. Um, the Virginias with a little bit of Perique and a little Cavendish. It's the Cavendish that actually made me think I might really like it. Um, the kind of vapor quality but with a little sweetness added. And then the the bourbon and the vanilla. Um, it just sounded too yummy. So here we go. Nice tin. Uh, we'll do of a hiss there from the oh yes from the vacuum press wow right away the bourbon the smell of the bourbon is is immediately apparent let's see up oh, there get it into the light there look on that uh, take my sunglasses off so I can appreciate the colors here so, very golden, golden looking, golden red tobacco, with some good red pieces, um, tiny, tiny bit of Latakia in there, and then something that's white. What is this little bit of white? I hope they didn't uh, grind up some paper or something in here. There's some little, like, white hairs. Not hairs, but... Okay. Oh, but the smell there. Very, very vanilla, very bourbon. Like, and I mean, like, not just the sweet smell of bourbon, but, like, I smell alcohol. I know that's not gonna 
<laughs> be a thing in smoking it, but mm, that is incredibly yummy and lovely. Uh, it's, um, it's a ribbon cut here. You can see these fine little ribbons. It's one thing that I was concerned about. I almost grabbed my uh, shallowest pipe for this, but I wanted something that had good color out since we're going to be outside in the sun. Um, just because I just opened it, the moisture level is obviously going to be pretty moist. And feeling it, I would say that it's slightly moist. Um, I would normally obviously give this type of thing a good half hour of drying time, but uh, not for this first impression. So let me load up here. I've got my Graybow Royalton going on. Let's uh, see if I can do this. Not making a big mess. It is much easier to certainly load up a pipe in the jar and then not worry about it. Top back on here, and let's uh, let's get started. It's actually a really bright day today. Very promising start. So the first tastes are mostly Virginia. Very satisfying, um, earthy mm, just got to hit a bourbon there. Um, it's nowhere near as sweet as I would have thought. Uh, especially considering that, uh, that tin note. And I would almost swear there was a slight, in that taste, a slight maple. There's a lot of flavors going on here. Yeah, there's, um... I stick with that maple impression. There, there's a good like vapor base kind of taste to it. Everything that you would expect from a vapor. Um, I do taste the the vanilla and the bourbon. More vanilla than bourbon.
there's a good kind of middle of the tongue tanginess. I guess that's a little more in the front of the tongue. Hmm. Mm. This is nice. It's um it's a lot more Virginia than I would have expected. And every couple of sips you get that topping. Um it'll be interesting to see how it goes through the bowl. Um as each sip seems to have, to be different as we're still kind of getting going here. The retro hail is uh, seems to be a lot of the flavorings, a uh, little earthiness, a little little hay, but mostly it's that that vanilla topping. I actually think that that maple quality is the bourbon. And now I want to, and the reason why I say that is now I get a slight banana. And um, that banana taste, it reminds me of one of my favorite bourbons. I haven't uh, encountered it in a while. It's actually not a special or expensive bourbon. I.W. Harper, um, it was our well bourbon at this Chinese restaurant I worked at in my late 20s. probably one of the West best well brands um, I had ever encountered, you know, in a bar. And it always made me think of bananas. Um, you know, it's probably like a certain type of sugar uh, in the distillation process that creates a banana-like sugar. So yeah, I, I, I stand by the uh, the banana banana taste. It's I'm getting a lot of it now. Um, perhaps that's a fermentation thing with the the tobaccos. Um, tangy, sweet but not sugary. Yeah. This is very nice. This is, um, you know, halfway between, as much as, um, say, the Frogmorton stuff is an aromatic English crossover, this would be a Virginia-based crossover, I guess. Pretty heavily flavored but you can still very, very much taste the, uh, the Virginias and the Turkish. I like it, it's good. Um, this, is not, this is not an A, this is a good B plus. Uh, I don't think I will crave this, you know, if I were on a desert island and, and had no access to worldly pleasures this wouldn't be probably what I'd be dreaming about. But I could see myself going to my tobacco hutch and fingering my options and going, oh, I want that today um, from, from time to time. It's good. I like it. Clearly, right out of the tin, it's smoking well. I have not relit. We've got a good, let's see if I can find a spot where the light's hitting it right. We've got a good fine gray ash forming. A 
There's a little bit of citrus coming through at the moment. A little lemony. So yeah, John Marr. If, uh, if you want something that's a little bit different, um, go get you some. It's good. It's very good. So, have good thoughts for me that my son's nap cooperates. Um, I put him down a little bit early today. Hopefully we can go to the Children's Museum. Uh, you know, still got to get back in time to uh, cook our Shabbat dinner. Um, and I want to I wanna grill the chicken, so I want a little time. So keep your fingers crossed for that. And you guys have a spectacular Friday. Happy weekend. Shabbat Shalom. Zagazund.